This is the underside of the main chassis, built out of plywood and roughly six by one timber, held together with lap joints, the idea being that the joint itself will stop the buffer beam here being pulled off when something's connected to it. These rubber anti-vibration mounts or maybe they're called vibration mounts. Either way, they're rubber mounts used in the automotive industry and they're where I intend fitting the sub-assemblies where the wheels will be. As you can see, there's a little bit of electric wiring in place, but I'll cover that at a later stage. Here's the motor unit with the motor itself driving a lay shaft here. The small sprocket drives a larger sprocket to reduce the speed that everything's turning at. The motor turns very fast but we don't want the wheels going too fast or we're going at about 100 miles an hour. We're aiming at something more like 4 miles an hour. So we've reduced the speed a bit turning this axle or lay shaft a little slower. We use the same idea of a small sprocket driving a larger sprocket from the lay shaft to the drive axle to reduce the speed more. Hopefully I've worked out the gearing correctly and this will give us a sensible speed when it's all fitted on the locomotive. You may also notice this sprocket here which I'm not sure whether I'm going to use, but it's there so that I can connect it to a similar one on the uh, other axle at the other end of the locomotive to make it four wheel drive. Uh, the two axles are held in place with plumber blocks. A lot of the sprockets are held in place with taper lock bearings. This means that they can be moved on the axles or swapped over if the gearing proves wrong. The plumber blocks have slots, as does the motor mounting, so that everything is adjustable, so that the chains, as they wear, can be adjusted slightly to give an appropriate amount of movement in them. They don't want to be totally tight but they don't want to be too slack so everything can be moved in relation to everything else and keep everything in correct tension. Time to fit the motor unit in place having remembered to thread the wire from the motor through to the top side of the next bit of wiring. So this is fairly heavy we just fit it on top of those vibration mounts if we can persuade it into place. We may need to go and get a gentle persuasion tool. These two units are now in place and you can probably or maybe see that they wobble around a bit which is what the idea of the rubber vibrations mount is, is to just give a little bit of suspension. Here we have a different view, top side up, batteries placed where provisionally they're going to go, hidden underneath the seat, which should slot into place just about here, Oops, behind the wires, and there we are, a central seat so that we have a locomotive that will go equally well in either direction. All we need now is a little bodywork, which is what these ammo boxes are for. This is how the locomotive will end up looking, roughly at least. Uh, you may notice there's a speed control mounted this side. The lever should send us off in the direction of travel. And speed control over here, which is connected to a PWM controller hidden inside this box. Other than that there may be a few additions 
such as an amp like this, which is a, a ex British Rail Louise, well, in fact, this one may be WD um, Bardic Lamp. And they're quite interesting in that you can change the colour of the lens. I don't know whether it shows up in this direction. Red for reverse, perhaps, and uh, clear for forwards. So mount one of those on each end, possibly on a, a lamp bracket, since there's a handy fixing here for hooking over a lamp bracket. And apart from that, the only other addition I have in mind at the moment is, if I can reach it, this quite nice lever I managed to get from a scrapyard. And I think that will be look the part and feel the part for the speed control. Here's a view from the other side and uh, I might as well take this opportunity to describe some of the wiring that needs to be done. Obviously the batteries are in the box here under the seat and uh, the first thing required is to go via this contact breaker just for safety's sake act as a fuse if all else if something goes wrong then that should break the circuit allowing for a bit of safety and then if we just move around to the other side I'll note perhaps hidden by my feet before this button here which is going to be a dead man stop button basically the locomotive won't go anywhere unless that button is depressed so before going anywhere you will have to have your foot on that button to complete the circuit and allow the locomotive to move from there the wires will go up to the PWM which is contained within the battery box at the front here. So if we just open that up, see, oh, that was a bit of a crash, wasn't it? From there, the only thing remaining is to go via the forward and backward switch, which again, similar wiring to the other end in the battery box, but this time, the wires leading out will lead down to the motor, which I don't think we can see at all, but it's somewhere under there, uh, to drive the thing along. The time has come to make the last electrical connection. Let's hope this works. And that I don't get a nasty electric shock or the whole thing bursts into flames or anything like that. Of course, I don't know whether these batteries are fully charged, so it might well be that nothing happens at all. Right, just tighten those terminals on. Right, final connection made. So, contact. Seat in place. Seat in place. Select forwards. Of course, I haven't um, worked out which way is forwards and which way is backwards with the wiring because I don't know which way the motor goes. Chances are it goes the wrong way, if it goes anywhere at all. It goes nowhere. I think they've got flat batteries. Just double check we've got this button pressed. Ooh. explains my problem. I've forgotten to remove the chocks which I carefully put there due to not having any brakes on this locomotive as yet. I forgot to mention earlier that that's one thing that will have to be added but is a future project not for today. Anyway, remove the chocks 
and we'll have another go at a quick backwards and forwards. Midges are biting terribly now. One more thing before setting off on the slightly more extensive test run. Every locomotive should have a warning device. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.